I am more and more convinced every bit of it should be memorized in detail. And my belief is that periodically we should go through it in detail. I can give you what the Chinese line is by each of the figures. And you can remember that, that line for those characters that's associated with that figure until unbidden by you while you're doing standing practice, the picture will come into your mind and you'll realize I, I can put that in my head like I do the, the anatomical picture that you have. You know, you have an anatomical picture of what the inside of your head looks like, the bones and stuff. And that's the picture you have when you're focusing inside. If you substitute this picture uh, for the inside of your head, for the inside of your body, I think uh, that the meaning uh, of it and the and the the purpose of it and the and the use of it and 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 figuring out what to do with it becomes more and more apparent. I think through tuning into the people who wrote it, like uh, radio wave, this SETI business where we're sending radio waves out into the cosmos, hoping aliens will pick them up and respond to us. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, that has been happening toward us forever. And, and if you tune in correctly, then, then you get direct information from uh, the guys that made this stuff. Can I ask a question? Uh-huh. What's that little box in like the kind of top right corner? It looks like it, almost like a pyramid box. Well, you notice above it, it has the number eight. Yes. What that is, is a little pyramid on the very crown. And, and what the Chinese above it says... Dense Net Terrace. So it's some sort of... I, I, w I would think it may be an antenna of some sort, mm -hmm. like a net, you know, like the mesh net. That's what they call the router that's out, is a mesh net mm -hmm. that sends a s signal all, all over. And, and it's, you go up to this highest valley, and it's I mean, a valley, it's not a peak. Vine, tangled vines. Yeah, I, how else would you describe a, a, a net on the etheric plane? But, tangled vines. That's the closest you could come for a word that would describe it. Mm -hmm. And magic, Ling, uh, comes down to that terrace. In, in any case, I think it's just like my satellite thing up there that, that is a, has a, a, can take in the net that's being broadcast out from the universe. And, yeah, and it's like the pineal gland? No, the the pineal gland is is uh, here. Yeah, uh, yeah, fourteen, uh, and 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 that says uh, the ascending method, um, the ascending method's beginning or spring. Now I feel like that I have gotten directly a message through number eight. The uh, what is this again? How do you say that? <laughs> that this antenna here for communicating with immortals has downloaded to me that this is very important to memorize all the different pieces of this, the pictures of this, so that when you're standing and you and and you're letting go of any intentional practice that it appears to you and you can put it in your body in where it matches inside your body and uh, it is like that kind of antenna and it, it's like dialing in a particular frequency and it's a way by which the immortals can tell you how to uh, internal alchemy. So even though that 
that sounds ridiculous when I say it. This actually is something I take fairly seriously. And I'm going to go over it again and again, I think, periodically, so that 20 years from, from now, when I say uh, white-haired Lao Tzu, or when, you, or when you're standing, you, you all of a sudden see in your forehead uh, the white-haired Lao Tzu that, uh, whose eyebrows stretch down to earth. Now, that's kind of an interesting. I mean, that's not that hard to forget. And, and apparently, it's an important part of the, of the formula. Let me show it to you. What's the number here? And see, see with my really... Did you put these numbers in? No. Uh, there's a PDF that I'll give anybody that wants where a guy has put a tremendous amount of work in and has translated all these lines. These are where the ordinary translations are coming from. And, I, and I've also just taken these pictures and, and stolen them and have stuck them in this. And then I've pulled my own translations out, which include his as well. So what did I say? It's nine. So number nine, next to the old guy that's in your forehead, it says, white-headed old boy, Lao Tzu, his eyebrows hang down to earth. And the next picture, this guy, who's right in the throat, really kind of on the, on the lower, he may, he may be the tongue, he may be right where the tongue is. And uh, the line next to him says, uh, what's it? let's look at his number, 22. And then we can go here, 22. The blue-green eyes, foreign monk, hands hold up heaven. This, of course, the, the blue-green-eyed foreign monk is Bodhidharma. And why the Taoists consider Bodhidharma one of their key images, I think is useful, important, and uh, they claim Bodhidharma, well, and it's not just, it's not just that they use a lot of Buddhist imagery in Taoism, but the Gung Fu people like us, our root forms, even though we're a Taoist school, our root forms are, are supposedly have been brought from India by Dhammo. About that line. Uh huh. So if you're saying that that the foreign monk represents the tongue, and it's saying holding up the heavens, and like the the technique of holding the tongue to the roof of your mouth, do you think like each of these like images and lines are actually like cryptic for techniques? Absolutely. Okay. Not just things you should be able to sense naturally. No, no. I think they are all signaling particular techniques. Just like, an, and, you, and, you, and you can tell that just by the, the Taoist exercise that we have, which I think is a foundational exercise, mm -hmm. where uh, you have all these images, all these separate exercises put together, like dangling at the end of strings, like, uh, 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 shaking the organs inside your body. These are all separate exercises that are part of the foundation of the exercises that they give uh, in this particular tradition. Uh, and, and I think it is carried a lot in Guanjin Taoism, even if they don't understand that at one time, or for some people, these are reference very definite physical exercises. Mm -hmm. But that may be not all they represent, too. They're, they also, you know, like stories and principles and I think the story the story of Bodhidharma is something that is good to to be brought to mind periodically because it's a it's a foundational idea within the tradition did you have a question Krista um, how come I never got a drink I'm much more interesting if I have a, like a drink? yeah it, it, find me a bottle of cognac and just give me one of those little shots of it okay. the yogurt cup Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a yogurt cup. Uh, oh, you didn't measure. I think that looks right. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering. You know, it's possible, but I don't know. And that dot that's above, like the 
kind of middle peak. That's byway, right? Um, that might be the point a foot above the head. Mm -hmm. It's just they had to squeeze it in. But a, one of the, the line above it is one of these lines of importance that are, that are really in, a, in this sequence down below uh, where they're all put together in a particular order. And this one says, one grain of millet in the, in the center stores the whole universe. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a microcosm, macrocosm thing. It's talking about this tiny point of light, but actually within that light, literally there's as, 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 as much going on as in the whole universe. It's, 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 it goes both ways in terms of the micro world and the macro world. It's all so much bigger than we can imagine. This, this is a repeating theme in this about uh, seeds and tiny golden, uh, what I think is, is, is clear reference to this basic way you start learning Taoist practice is picturing this point of light that moves through the body and then is anchored in the Dantian and, and expands. And, and over and over again in this, they're, they're talking about circles uh, and coins and, and, and points of light. And I think this grain of millet is, is one of those. If you've ever seen millet, it's like perfectly mm -hmm. round uh, and, and a little bit golden. And then you come down here to this guy and this obviously is in the region of the heart in the body but exactly what that is is hard to know I have come to the conclusion that it is a, uh, a, a, a blending together of fire and water that's nourishing this uh, part of the body that that contains some part of you that is uh, trying to connect back up to the stars, particularly the stars in the north. And this is a this could be a, a reference to a whole school of Taoism or particularly Taoist techniques. But it's quite clearly a guy, and there's a line going from his third eye to his hand to the uh, points of the Big Dipper. And those two points of the Big Dipper point to the North Star. So that's probably the North Star that he's connecting to with his hand and connecting his uh, uh, third eye. Now, if you look closely at those stars, they all have little black squares in the middle. And, and the, the line that goes beside it is that, that the stone carving boy holds a string of cash. It, there again, you're at these round gold uh, uh, points that uh, you're connecting with. So this two character word here, Chuan, Guan Chuan, means a string of cash, which is the idea of these coins Chinese coins that are square in the middle, all strung together yeah. in, a, in a string of cash. And the, the, the character for money, for cash, this one guan, that bottom half of it was a, a cowrie shell originally, because that was their first money. And then on top is the idea that you're, you know, you're, it's got a hole in it and you're putting it in a string. And then the second character is just real forces. This is a string of those modern kind of coins. That like, why call it that? Why not call it like diamonds or pearls or, you know, like sparkly things? Or? I have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I, I think as you are standing in the universe and picturing that guy connecting with the Big Dipper, that it will come to you. That, that that 
if you remember the picture that and in a in a particular state then the reason that that it was made like that will come to you okay. i think there are uh immortals waiting for someone to ask that question my, my whole thing is that it really comes from this whole basic Taoist exercise that we have somehow come in touch with that involves these little circles of light. And I, and I think it's a recurrence of that symbol that's the important thing. Circles of light. Circles of light. That you, that you pull down through the top of your head into your body. That is that one of the most basic root myths stories of in china is uh, the stone carving boy and that's the title of the story and it and it's it starts with a boy carving on a stone and he sees a uh, a rich merchant go by and and he thinks boy you know this is a miserable job i would really have rather be a rich merchant and and be carried by people and have lots of money and all of a sudden he is that uh, and he looks at his life and realizes that he's under all of this pressure from the people above him, the great Lord above him, and, and he's really kind of oppressed, and he wants to then be a great Lord, and all of a sudden, he, and it goes through this, mm -hmm. and it finally it goes up to where he is, uh, uh, heaven, and then, and then he's reign. Uh, and, then, and then he looks, I, I can't remember the whole thing, but it's a circle that comes back to the highest <laughs> power in the world is somebody who can carve stone. Sure. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's this metaphor of yearning to be something that, you're, that you see above you that you're not. And how all of those power structures are kind of cyclical anyway. And everybody yeah, and that... Something has power over it. Something has power over everything, and, and, and it's circular, and the place that you're in, yeah, you, you, there's a place above you, and you, and, and you have to look up to the stars to, to, to try to connect with where you're going and, and, and what's next. So I feel like we just completely described what the picture is, because he's walking a spiral, yeah. which is a circle. Yeah. You're never in the same place at the same time because it's constantly evolving and like time space is changing, right? But he's also looking a star, changing his fate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think it is a reference to a, an exercise like that. Yeah. Uh, and also, one interesting thing about it is that the characters inside of it say. Jin, which is the Chinese character for the the uh, uh, trigram for mountain, uh, and then it has the character for the basic character for earth, and that's like inside this circle. Twenty nine. Well, I'll tell you, there's one other complication, and that is. You you know there's this line about the stone carving boy here, by the by the Big Dipper, but over here by his head, yeah, that? that says uh, 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 herding boy, like cow herder, uh, bridge star. This, boy is two boys simultaneously. this may be two boys simultaneously because down below, uh, by by this woman, there is this. Uh, 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 36, it says, weaving girl turns a wheel. So it's a reference to the, to the um, uh, cow herd boy and the weaving girl, which is one of the oldest, most foundational myths in... Uh, and the magpie bridge. And the magpie bridge. Uh, which, so, okay, he, is he a stone carving boy or is he a herder? I don't know what the question is. I guess I just, I just, I just imagine that, that, they're, that they're, it's, it's referencing some, something specific. It's not, you know. I think it will be, it well could be representing something specific that is only told to you by your uh, true master. And once, and once you ask the question with enough intemp intensity, someone will notice that there is someone with a real question and will give you the answer. Mm -hmm. so if you, you if you hold the picture 
of the boy <laughs> climbing the mountain in your heart during your practice? Mm. I have a question. Uh -huh. What does the other very short sentence inside the spiral say? Uh, there, it there? says, Don Jia, and it's kind of mysterious because it's a, it's a um, particle with the word for field. Uh, uh, so it's kind of like this is field is what is what they're translating it as, but field of course this this TN is what we're making inside our lower belly and then in our in our throat and then I think uh, within our heart uh, and it's an indication that this is one of the fields that we are with our intent creating. And it's also going up a mountain. Question about faith. Yeah. Um, about what? Faith. <laughs> uh, oh, good. Just, just as that we've moved past nine o'clock. <laughs> Maybe we can start with it next week. Let's see how hard a question it is. Well, I'm wondering if there's if if faith is. If your, your ming comes to you when you're born, when you take your first breath, when you have your first birthday, like is, there a, is there a point at which your ming is bestowed upon you, in essence? I, when they talk about it, they sometimes use the word constellation, which is their way of saying astrology. It's your chart. It's like the stamp that you come in with, mm -hmm. out of which your life progresses. And within our school of Taoism, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, dual cultivation of Xing and Ming. Xing being your true essential nature, which is in your heart. And that is something that You're here to uh, stay connected with and, and, and let be changed by experience, but is really your essential nature. Whereas Ming is your, the course of your life that is dictated you by the body that you have and the uh, heredity and the time and place that you're born. It's like the, the parts that, the mechanical parts of life that dictate what happens to you. Where your, your sheng is what you really are. And both need to be cultivated. And the Southern School emphasized the Ming, and the Northern School emphasized Qing. But really, they, they, there was always this emphasis on on both need to be uh, developed. Both both need to be cultivated. And in most of conventional society, both East and West. Uh, you know, there are some people that not naively say you can choose your own fate and, and whatever happens to is because you've chosen it, which is nonsense. And then there are, <laughs> are people that, that feel like they're completely, what's the term from Protestantism? Uh, yeah, predestined. Predestined. You're predestined to either be saved or go to hell and, and there's really nothing you can do about it. It's... You could just have faith in, in God or whatever, but but there's no latitude. But in in within Guanjin Taoism, there is the idea that there are certain things about your fate, your Ming, your you know what's what's been given to you as absolute and unchangeable can be changed. But you have to pluck a star. Too. But you have to you have to bring in starlight and create a different kind of body inside your physical body in order to manifest a different kind of fate, something that comes from the stars rather than from the earth. While still maintaining contact with your inner child. Yeah, <laughs> in your heart. 
<laughs> while moving in a spiral up the mountain. Which, which is also replicating the spiral of the heavens above, right? Yeah, and, 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 and which will uh, enable your sheng to fully uh, evolve. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll call it. <laughs> Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. What was I doing? Yeah, that's what I was doing. Okay. Ah, there it is. <laughs>